Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Great to be with you and wishing you all the very, very best for 2024. Hopefully you've had some nice time with family and friends to relax and unwind. And uh, I also wanted to just thank you for the ongoing support of the channel and also the website, heartmatters.com. Feedback, comments, emails that I'm receiving through my office about the fact that you found certain articles very useful, the videos on YouTube, uh, are helping give you some further understanding about heart disease and heart health in general. So I really take that on board and I'm very appreciative of all the support. So a common scenario that I often see is a patient that comes to me having been referred by their local doctor or general practitioner with an electrocardiogram or an ECG suggesting they've had a heart attack. Now it's pretty frightening to be told that you may have had a heart attack when you've not been aware of any particular symptoms. Well, let's look into why and how this happens. So we've had a video on what an ECG is. The electrocardiogram is a tracing of the rhythm of the heart, and it's used to give us an understanding of how the heart rhythm is working, how fast the heart is beating, is it regular or irregular, and essentially looks at some of the patterns of the heart function and how wiring or the electrical signals of the heart operating. It gives us an idea about you know, overall health of the heart muscle. We can see changes, for example, of heart muscle being enlarged or dilated. We can also see when the heart muscle has been damaged or weakened. And if somebody has had heart attack or chest pain, we do an ECG to look for changes that might indicate a possible blockage of an artery. Well, one of the changes we look at on the ECG is something called a Q wave. And a Q wave is a deflection that we look at in the tracing of the heart that can signify damage or scarring in the heart muscle. Now, Q waves can often be seen in normal, healthy individuals. And when we see Q waves, they are often very, very small on the ECG. They do not signify any particular problem. But when they are reported as possible Q waves, particularly what we call in the inferior leads, then that can create a bit of anxiety and stress that you may have had a heart attack. Well, more likely than not, I can say that you haven't and that the findings of the ECG are incorrect or haven't been reported appropriately. There might be a little Q wave or a deflection tracing on the ECG in one of the leads that does not mean you've had a heart attack. But it does create that anxiety and that worry. When, some, when I do see a patient who comes in with this scenario, the key thing is to look at what the overall cardiac risk factors are, and particularly looking at diabetes, because we know that people with diabetes may not have the typical symptoms of chest pain, shortness of breath, that might indicate a blockage of an artery. Diabetes can essentially mask the nerves and doesn't you know, permit patients to have the typical symptoms. And in that case, yes, we can see patients who come to us, have had some tests and we do find that they have a blockage or a, block, a chronic blockage of an artery that may have indicated a heart attack in the past. And we often have to think back and say, well, look, have you had any symptoms whereby in the past you were worried about a major episode of indigestion, that, you know, you were getting a little bit alarmed or worried about something that was tight or heavy in the chest. But most often, it's not the case. Most often, it's otherwise healthy individuals that have had an ECG and that are told that you might have had a heart attack. Just to reassure you, most often that the report is incorrect. They are not true Q waves. For them to be classed as Q waves, we as cardiologists know that they have to meet certain criteria, but they are often misinterpreted and reported on electrocardiograms. But of course, it's important to take a history there is another scan called an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound that can give us good assessment of how the heart muscle is functioning to give us further reassurance that there hasn't been a heart attack, there hasn't been any damage to the heart muscle. And we, of course, as I mentioned, look at all your cardiac risk factors and uh, things like blood levels of cholesterol, diabetes, your blood sugars, looking at blood pressure and making sure that overall heart function is normal. So I'm glad that I can reassure most of my patients with this scenario can be frightening. Take a step back. Of course, if you have any symptoms, any tightness, pressure, any symptoms that are concerning you, please 
call the paramedics, call the ambulance service. Please always consult with healthcare professionals if you have any symptoms that are concerning. Thanks again for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.